Joining me right now on Kumite Radio is Devin Morris. He will be fighting on One Warriors 3 on October 11th in Singapore. Yeah. What's going on, Devin? What's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. Uh, earlier this year, you blew onto the Asian MMA scene at RFC 1 in Taiwan. You didn't even need a minute to add another Korean or to add a Korean opponent to your highlight reel. Take us back to that night. Break down the fight. Bro, back to that night. Actually, actually before before that night, we were just thinking visualize, visualize. And I was thinking one and done the entire time. I'm not wanting to say it a lot because I'm really humble. But in my mind, I try to keep it real, you know, serious. And we got in there. And it just it just happened. I listened to my corner when I when uh, Tick was my corner. Then when he sees something, I just I respect all my training partners. And when they see something, I throw it, bro. And he saw it, and I threw it, and he dropped fifty two seconds, and it was just like that. Over. Caption done. History. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Taiwan, they call you the Black Tiger. How did that come about? Hey, who? I actually, I used to teach in, like, Puli, way, like, north of Taiwan in, in this real, like, small town. And uh, a bunch of the uh, students there gave me that name. It's actually my real name in, in Taiwan on my ID. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, that's a memory right there. Yeah. <laughs> now, with that win, you snapped a Fort Fight losing streak. It must have, that win must have removed a lot of pressure off your shoulders. How much pressure did you have to go in there and perform? Um, I would say if, if that fight happened a couple of years ago, I would have had more pressure. But at that time, I felt really comfortable going there and perform. It, it, I thought there was supposed to be a lot of pressure because I'm living in Taiwan. You know, I know a lot of people there at the promotion. I knew the guy who owned the promotion. I was like, you know, I haven't fought in a minute. People haven't seen me in a while. I was like, bro, you better you better come out and show something. Like, what have you been doing? <laughs> so, but when I got out there, I just kind of trusted my camp, and I, I kind of felt pretty chill. It's the first time I, I, I felt pretty relaxed in there, extremely relaxed. Yeah. Since it has been such a long time since you competed, was it almost like you're starting another career in a way for you? Yeah, not just starting another career, but like a new style. Mm. Completely different fighter, a new career, yeah. New team, new place, new space. So everything's pretty pretty new and feng shui. We're all like, every, yeah, new life. <laughs> For sure. Well, before that fight, you only competed one time over a five-year period. What was going yeah. on through that whole time, man? Through that whole time, just working, trying to figure out what I was doing. I got married, um, taking care of my daughter as well. Uh, me and my wife was going to school, trying to figure out what we were going to do, where we were going to live, what was going to go on in life. Life was happening, you know. Had to put a few things off for a little bit. I thought uh, I thought moving to Taiwan, I was going to be fighting. I, I, moving to Asia, bro, I was like, it's Asia. There are ninjas everywhere. So, of course... There's gonna be fighting. We got there. It wasn't like that at all. There's there's not many gyms, and then I had to start teaching, and just time started passing, bro. That's what exactly what was happening. Ah, I had to lay it off for a little bit. Not Sad. many ninjas either, right? Nope, not many ninjas either. <laughs> <laughs> I was chilling like out at night, looking in the shadows, but no ninjas. For real. <laughs> now you said you were in Taiwan, but now you are in Phuket training at Phuket Top Team. Was that the destination you were looking for when you came to Asia? Yeah, it was destination I was definitely wanting to be at. I, at first, I didn't even know that uh, this place existed, actually. At first, I was at Team Quest in Chiang Mai, and I was only there for about, I don't even know, what, three, four months, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I kept going back, and I just went back to Taiwan, trained there for a little bit, and uh, eventually found... The Soy Taid. Uh, I was going to go to Tiger, but I came down to the street and just tried a few of the gyms, went to Phuket Top Team and really started filling everyone there. It was a really cool uh, family environment. Pretty dope. Yeah. What kind of sacrifices are you making by traveling across the globe to chase your dreams? 
A lot of those sacrifices include like not seeing family as often as I as I definitely like to. Um, not spending quality time being there, basically, basically, you know, not really uh, being able to be a part of my daughter's life, my family's life, and people like that. But I plan on changing that, you know, like real soon. As soon as I, as soon as I get this contract, bro. As soon as I take it out. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Who are you working with to elevate your game, your all-around game? All around, uh, Eric, 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 man, I can never say his last name, Eric's, but yeah, he's our head coach, you know, and I work with Tick2, Tony uh, Hitmanos, uh, just on the mix. Uh, Tick is a really good mind to work with when it comes to movement and um, just just staying fundamentally sound, you know, with my stuff. Eric, definitely with all around everything, dude's knowledgeable in every aspect, like, of the game and he 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 sees like you know things for for different styles and different people not everyone's just running on the same program all the time how has training at ptt changed you as a fighter it's made me more relaxed more uh, comfortable being in there uh definitely sharper skills um confident because there's there are some dogs out there bro like, people don't come to Thailand because they suck from where they come from. They're trying to get better. They usually come to Phuket Top Team and over to Thailand because they're probably already whooping people at their gym. And they're going to see, like, oh, what's Thailand got to offer? So savages come in and out on, like, the daily. And you have to, you have to like, adapt real fast to everyone because everyone, a lot of people are new. People just show up, you know. It's a lot of, a lot of interesting corpse that are thrown in there when you're in this environment october 11th one warrior series three you are getting a huge opportunity so what kind of showing do you expect out of yourself no <laughs> uh i expect the exact same thing that i've always been doing i'm sticking to a plan that i have you know my skill sets um no i I plan on uh, finishing the fight, definitely. I plan on pulling the trigger, using my hands. I like to use those a lot, put them down, and after he goes down, I don't plan on, you know, doing much more after that but celebrating. All right, October Devin. 11th. Thank you for your time, and uh, good luck on October 11th.